Have you ever wondered what connects a glass bottle, a stained glass window, and a simple jar tossed into the recycling bin? If so, you've played a part in the story of glass. This ancient material is not only versatile and durable, it's also one of the few we can recycle indefinitely without losing quality. But what actually happens once that empty bottle leaves your hands? How does used glass get transformed into something entirely new? Stick around as we explore the remarkable journey of recycled glass right here on History of Simple Things. To understand how glass is recycled, it helps to first understand what it's made of. At its core, glass is composed of three primary ingredients, silica sand, soda ash, and limestone. These materials are heated to extremely high temperatures, around 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit, until they melt into a liquid. Once cooled, this molten substance solidifies into the glass we use every day. What makes glass so unique is that its chemical structure doesn't degrade during recycling. That means it can be melted down and reformed endlessly, maintaining the same strength and clarity as when it was first made. So why is glass recycling so important? For starters, manufacturing new glass from raw materials is energy intensive. By contrast, Recycling glass can use up to 30% less energy, largely because crushed glass, known as cullet, melts at a lower temperature. Additionally, using cullet reduces the need for mining natural resources and helps cut down on carbon emissions. In fact, for every ton of glass recycled, over 300 kilograms of CO2 emissions can be avoided. It's a highly efficient, sustainable process when done correctly. The recycling process begins with collection, and this is where individuals make the first impact. Whether you drop your glass off at a recycling center or place it in a curbside bin, the journey starts with municipal or private waste management services. In some regions, recyclables are sorted at the source, glass in one bin, paper in another. In others, everything goes into a single container and is separated later. Once collected, the glass is taken to a Material Recovery Facility, MRF, where it's separated from other recyclables like plastic and metal. However, glass often breaks during transport, which makes this step both crucial and delicate. After arriving at a glass processing facility, the material undergoes color sorting. This is essential because different types of glass serve different purposes. Glass is typically sorted into clear, flint, green, and brown amber categories. These colors can't always be mixed without affecting the appearance and quality of the final product, so precise sorting is key. Advanced machinery using optical sensors, air jets, and conveyor systems helps automate this process. In many facilities, workers also perform manual checks to remove non-glass items like metal caps, plastic lids, or ceramic fragments. Next comes cleaning, which prepares the glass for melting. The sorted glass is crushed into small fragments called cullet, which is then passed through a series of cleaning systems. These use air classifiers, magnets, and even lasers to remove impurities such as paper labels, organic residue, and non-glass contaminants. The goal is to achieve a purity level of at least 95% cullet, which ensures high-quality results in the remanufacturing process. The cleaner the input, the better the final product, and the less energy required to produce it. Once thoroughly cleaned, the cullet is transferred to a furnace where it's melted at temperatures exceeding 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,400 degrees Celsius. 
This molten mixture may be combined with a small amount of raw materials to meet specific manufacturing requirements. However, many manufacturers now aim for as much cullet content as possible in order to maximize sustainability. One major advantage of using cullet is that it reduces the energy needed for melting, which in turn extends the life of the furnace and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. After melting, the liquid glass is shaped into new products. This could include bottles, jars, construction materials, or even fiberglass insulation. In container manufacturing, the molten glass is fed into molds and shaped using compressed air in a process known as blow and blow or press and blow, depending on the product type. The newly formed items are then gradually cooled in a process called annealing, which relieves internal stresses and strengthens the final product. From here, the new glass products are packaged and shipped to manufacturers, retailers, or directly to consumers, completing the recycling loop. Glass recycling is often cited as a perfect example of a closed loop system meaning the material can be reused over and over again with no loss in quality or performance. A single glass bottle can go from being used to recycled to reborn on a store shelf in as little as 30 days. That kind of efficiency not only conserves resources, it also reduces the environmental footprint associated with packaging. Some regions even offer bottle deposit systems, which reward consumers for returning glass containers, boosting recycling rates and improving material quality. From ancient material to modern marvel, glass continues to be one of the most sustainable resources we have, as long as we recycle it responsibly. By giving it new life again and again, we not only preserve its beauty, but also protect the planet for generations to come. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.